they get in the current and he just wants to just keep pulling. Nothing gets your heart racing than seeing a fish come into the spread and then jumping like that. That's the cool thing about when you're fishing for marlin and mahi is they put on such an acrobatic show. That's what I love about dolphin. These fish undergo so many different color transformations. The prettiest pelagic fish you can catch. Not only are they delicious, but they are a sight to see. When we gaffed this thing, it was a bright yellow and dark green. And now he's going right here by the tail and basically just work up. I really, for all pelagic fish, dolphin, tuna, wahoo, um, kingfish, basically anything with really thin skin, I really like to work from the tail to the head on that first cut. I find you make the least amount of mistakes. Got to break through the pin bones of the mahi. Once I get to the backbone, I'm just going to free up this meat. Now I'm going to kind of go right here on the top of his backbone and free up the meat right on top of it. You gotta really point the tip of your knife down on the other side of it where you're gonna miss a ton of meat. And then when I get to the gut cavity, don't go on the gut cavity. See, I kind of glided right over those ribs. Dolphins, since they grow so fast, they have one of the nastiest gut cavities and they're almost always full. There's always, almost always something in their stomach because these fish grow so dang fast. Look at that. Look at that slab of mahi mahi right there. Big old hot pan. Just went in with some oil, some onions and garlic. Tequila time, huh? Uh, uh, Como se dice in Espanol, like the method of what she did? Flambia. Flambia. So she just poured in a bunch of that tequila, pan searing the fish, and that tequila is going to reduce and it's going to turn sweet when you subject alcohol to a lot of heat, you're burning off that alcohol and what you're gonna be left with is this really rich, sweet, not that bitter taste you get from alcohol, but just this sweet flavor and a, a liquid to cook with the fish. Got some nice color on the mahi. Oh, mantequilla. You gotta finish off with some butter, put some fat in there. All right, and there's the reveal of the mahi. So she's cooking mahi in one pan and we're gonna do the grouper next garlic and onion for the grouper this time. Okay, once again, she's going in with the grouper. Gonna sear it a little bit, some lime juice. So now she's got a, a pot of adobo. She's just gonna reheat. You got cinnamon, naranja, so orange juice, uh, guajillo chili, uh, anijo, uh, ajote chili, achote, achote. Is there a tomato in there too? No, tiene jitomate. Okay, and then it's also a tomato base. Oh, more than 200 things. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Broccoli, carrot, some cauliflower in there.
Look at that flaky, delicious grouper right there. Sanaoria. Oh man, look at that adobo. That silky smooth tomato sauce. Oh yeah. As soon as she pour that on the fish, I get just like smacked in the face with all that chili and cinnamon. And, oh, even the, the tortilla finish and the balsamic glaze. <laughs> okay, so Karen and everyone else at the lodge works extremely hard and it shows. She's so passionate about food. Um, 